Today, we're unpacking all things auto mixing. It's an invaluable tool, especially in dialogue based or corporate shows. And even if we just got two microphones, it could be helpful all the way up to 16 or even 64 open microphones at the same time. So if auto mixing is new to you, what it is is a tool that basically helps you wait and make sure that the one primary microphone or person that should be talking, since only one person should be talking at any given time, is coming through and the rest are lowered. So they could increase gain before for feedback. It can make things sound cleaner so you're not getting all this room noise and eliminate some worry for having to juggle everything with faders. You still have to mix the show, but it makes things a lot easier. For our roadmap today, first, we're going to talk a little bit more about what it is and why an auto mixer is helpful. Second, we're going to look at how it works. We're going to look under the hood, run some test tones and see some metering and see what it's trying to do and how it's helping us. Third, we're going to hear it in action with a short demo of me talking with some open microphones and an A, B, how much of the noise goes away. Fourth, we're going to have 10 super practical workflow tips and tricks from, again, over a decade of experience of me co mixing corporate gigs. And then lastly, we're going to have six alternative use cases for a Dugan or an auto mixer that are outside of the normal use case for on dialogue based shows for helping you manage all those microphones. I'm excited to jump in. Let's start with what is an auto mixer and why is it helpful to you? An auto mixer is also colloquially known as a Dugan. It's like Kleenex is synonymous with facial tissue. It was pioneered by Dan Dugan. The process that he used is called gain sharing. And he, he claims that he's able to get what would be coming through of 20 open microphones to the same game before feedback as just one microphone. So I don't know all the math that's involved in how it works, but gain sharing is, is the term that it used. Some folks uh, mistakenly call a Dugan a gate. It's not a gate. It's just managing and how the, the total gain in the system of all the channels run into an auto mixer works. Again, the, the key benefits that I listed at the top, there's more game before feedback because if you have 20 open microphones, that are introduced to just one, then you gain more headroom because every time you add an open microphone in your system, you reduce your gain before feedback by 3 dB. You also get a lot cleaner dialogue and less room noise because we all know that most of our gigs, especially in corporate settings, are not in nice treated studios. We're in ballrooms or even outside and there's lots of room noise and someone's driving by with a dump truck. And we wanna make sure that's tight and contained and clean. So the, the less open microphones are picking all that up, the better. It sounds better in the room, sounds good, better on the stream of records. And then lastly, uh, you have to do less micromanaging of your faders. I, I'm not saying that the auto mixer mixes the show for you, but I find myself being able to trust what it's doing more and more, know when to lean on it. And we'll get through uh, that later in the workflow tips and how I think about it and use it when I'm on corporate gigs. So the Dugan started out as an outboard based hardware unit that had chips that Dan Dugan designed in it that did the work. So you had to send things out of your console into the unit and it came back in, but now it's mainly software based. And as far as I know, his patent has expired. So other companies have taken advantage of his work. So on the Behringer X32 and the Midas M32 on your first eight channels, you have the auto mixer on Allen and Heath consoles. You have their AMM, which is the automatic mic mixer. They have their own algorithm, but you could also switch it over to D classic mode, which I do anytime I'm on a uh, uh, an Allen and Heath desk on a show. And you've got 64 channels of it, at least on the Avantis and on the D live. Yamaha has an official par partnership and licensure with Dugan. So you actually have the Dugan auto mixer built in. The CL and QL series have 16 channels of Dugan built in and the DM7 uh, as well as the Yamaha PM Ravage series have 64 channels. And then lastly, Waves has an official partnership. You can get their Waves Dugan Speech plugin. It's an update from the Dugan Auto Mixer plugin. That one's been discontinued. And you've got 64 channels built in, either on a plugin that you could run on an LV1 or a Waves SoundGrid server, or natively within a DAW environment uh, that you can use there as well. Now let's unpack how an auto mixer actually works. So here in Reaper, I've got a single channel that's running a tone generator. It's a, you can't hear it, but it's a single 1K uh, sine tone at negative 18. So it's going here and I've routed it here to these four channels, tone one, two, three, four. So imagine this is the same signal, not being sent to the master bus, but going to these four channels first 
and then to the master bus. I've got a metering plug in here, BX meter from Brainworks here in the master bus. And then this is the WT auto mixer plugin. Uh, and it's great. It's, uh, I don't have the Dugan plugin because it's usually built into consoles I use, and this is a lot more affordable option. I think when I got it, it was 169. You can Google that and check out their products. So what WT Auto Mixer is doing is I have it inserted on each of these channels. So it's right here, 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 here. And then these channels are reflected here uh, in the plugin. So the tone generator is running into channel one, and we can see this say, is saying, hey, I'm giving you all the priority. And we see that because then the meter is full. So I've actually got the disable auto mixing uh, uh, checkbox clicked here and I've got the other channels muted. So let me unmute channel two and this is with the auto mixing disabled and let's look at what's happening. So I'm gonna unmute it and we see both of these bars are green and full so they're adding together. Again, this is the same source so they're adding together perfectly since they are completely correlated. And now we are at minus 12. So that makes sense. We were at negative 18 and we've doubled, which adds six decibels. So now we're up to minus 12. And now let me unmute channel three. We've added a little bit more. And now let me unmute channel four. And now we're up to minus eight, which is not surprising since a 10 decibel change is a little bit over three X. So we've been from one microphone and then added three more. Now we're up to minus eight. But now let me turn on the auto mixing to see how all of these have dropped in level. So what it's trying, and now our total RMS output is right back down to negative 18. So what just happened? It said, hey, I wanna take the entire system and instead of giving everything its full amount of gas, I'm prioritizing this for just one output. And so I'm gonna bring it back down to that level. So for one microphone, so we're back right here at negative 18. So let me mute channels four, three, and two and work backwards again. So we have one channel, the auto mixing is on, and obviously it's passing all the way through since it's the only microphone. Now let me unmute channel two, and you see how now, since they're speaking at the same level, we have this little gap right here. They uh, are sharing the gain in the system. So we have still increased a little bit, but only three dB more. And so the algorithm might differ a little bit here on the W2 auto mixer from the Dugan, but all of the principles are the same. So now if I add this microphone in, we see the total amount of gain has now been shared between each of these three microphones, all right? And now let me add in the fourth and we see it brought back down again. So this yellow bar is telling us uh, how much is being, uh, if, if this is on in the algorithm. And so the green is telling us the amount of gain is being taken off or given to it. So again, it's not gonna increase the level at all of any microphone, it's only taking it down. So let me play with this a little bit. Let's have two microphones now. And this fader right here is, is the level right before it going into the plugin and the weighting system. So if I bring that down now, we can see, hey, it's saying this signal is not as strong as the first one. That probably means that this channel, this person is talking right now. So we're gonna prioritize it and bring the other down. So that's when someone's talking on an eight person panel, again, hopefully it's just one person at a time, they're talking, let's bring the others down. So that's what's happening. So even if I unmute this, it's at the same level, uh, it's gonna prioritize these two since they're at similar levels and then this one gets shoved down even more. Let me bring this level down to minus 12. And we can still see here that this is getting brought down a little bit to account for a little bit of audio coming from the other ones. Uh, and let me do the same thing here on this last channel. We can still, it's still prioritizing this first one, but uh, it's, it's being able to manage the gain in the other three and make it a lot cleaner. Again, if someone tells a funny joke on the panel, everyone starts laughing, we're gonna hear that. It's not like it's still only gonna have the moderator, whoever that might be who's talking, it's still gonna come through, but the total amount of level and game before feedback is gonna stay constant no matter what happens. So this is really helpful. Um, again, especially with a large channel count, but it's even helpful if it's just two people, because again, we don't want to hear someone just sitting there breathing or the air conditioning coming in through their lav or their handheld or something like that. We only want to worry about who is talking. To recap here on how it works is able to look at basically which channel has the highest level compared to the other ones, prioritize it and bring the others down to keep an equal gain across the entire system. 
by a process called gain sharing. So if everyone's equal, it's going to split the gain equally. By But by someone talking and therefore being louder, we are able to uh, have that coming through. Or if someone uh, is a soft talker, we need to make sure and give them some help and then duck the other microphones within reason so that the auto mixer can pick up on it. So again, it's not mixing for us, but we just need to know when to give it help and guide it to help prioritize microphones. So what I've got here is four microphones again. One is me talking, the other four is just, or the other three microphones is just picking up room tone and some pink noise I had just playing lightly to simulate some more added room noise. And what I'm gonna do is play it and bring in and out the auto mixing. You can even see in the metering right here how that's working. So here's some uh, a clip from one of my favorite songs. We're no strangers to love. You know the rules and so do I. A full commitment is what I'm thinking of. You wouldn't get this from any other guy. I just want to tell you how I'm feeling. Gotta make you understand. Never gonna give you up. Never gonna let you down. Never gonna run around and desert you. Never gonna make you cry. Never gonna say goodbye. Never gonna tell a lie and hurt you. All right, so you heard as I talked and engaged the auto mixing, you saw those meters bouncing and trying to prioritize inputs and got a lot cleaner. When it was open, a lot more room noise and things swimming around. So again, that in basis, that's what it's doing, just helping clean up things, prioritize who needs to be talking when uh, for the show's benefit. Up next, we got 10 workflow tips and tricks. This is in the normal use case environment. Later on, we'll get to six more kind of weird use cases that are still uh, useful. But uh, I wanna start first with that the Dugan insert points must be post fader. So this means that after you're mixing, it's sending it into the Dugan and prioritizing everything. And this makes sense because if it was pre-fader, that means we don't, it doesn't have uh, the judgment to decide what microphone should be on or off at any given point. So all this being said, any console that has it built in, make sure when you're routing it to the Dugan or auto mixer, you look at where your tap point is. Some consoles now have it uh, where it's permanently post-fader and you can't change it. So that's true in the, uh, the Avantis and the DLive consoles, as well as the Yamaha DM seven uh, and but in the CLQL series it works as an insert and you have to move your insert point post fader to make sure that works number two most auto mixers work only with mono inputs this might bite you if you have a remote presenter coming in over zoom and that input is stereo so you want to make sure and pick it off only mono then send it in if the console is not capable of working with the stereo input and I haven't found one uh, that is able to do that yet you may be able to work around it and like, oh, can I send that to a bus and the bus into the Dugan? But then again, the Dugan is, or auto mixer is only gonna be ducking the bus, not the actual channel. So just be very careful with your workflow and routing there. Number three is keep consistent levels. And of course you wanna do this with your show anyway to make sure levels are all over the place. But the more consistent you are with feeding uh, signals into the Dugan, the better it's able to prioritize and wait who is talking and when. So be still very active with your faders to adjust levels and your gain structure when coming in, but keeping it more consistent gets better results from the auto mixer. Number four is most auto mixers have a weighting or priority fader. So this is able to give more priority to a specific microphone. So this might be helpful with a moderator, especially when you have a lot of panelists and you can go into the weighting and boost that a little bit, maybe by three dB or so to make sure when the moderator has to ask a question or interrupt or keep things on track, they're always prioritized even if you have a rather boisterous or large personality as a guest. Number five, you can make different auto mix groups. So even in the WT auto mixer, as well as the Dugan plugin, uh, you can choose group A, B, C, and then later evolutions of the Dugan stuff has, uh, has a D and E as well. And this means that, hey, if I've got a, uh, a breakout room or maybe the general session, I can use the same unit, but have them working independently of each other. Or maybe you have uh, onstage microphones and then some Q&A microphones out in the room, and maybe you wanna have separate control over those. And I've also done this in a facility that had three different venues, but the same shared rack mount processor. You don't have to buy individual units for each room. It was 64 channels total. And between the three, no, no single venue had more than uh, 16. So I was able to fit it all within the processor then just divide it up between the groups. Number six, make sure and not use this on singing groups. So many times if you're working within a, within a pre-installed facility with all microphones going to a Dugan since the normal use case is corporate, 
Uh, you might get a singing group, <laughs> but they're in there. Uh, but if they're singing together, both of them need to be heard at equal level when they need to be. So make sure and bypass the insert if you have anyone singing, because again, it's not an either or, it is all of them coming in at the same time. Make sure and mind this as well. If you have a primary and backup podium microphone, I usually send them both to the Dugan, but I have one muted because I don't want to be hearing both microphones anyway. But uh, if you mute the other one, again, it's, it, it is a uh, pre fader, but may or may not be uh, on the mute. So just check the routing of your console that even if you mute the channel, is it going into the Dugan or not? Number seven, test your game before feedback and headroom with and without your auto mixer working. So how I do this is I have my A2 place all, let's say I have eight lobs that could be in play at any given time. I'll have stools out there, even just a table, place all eight lobs out there. Uh, and then I can bring in the Dugan processing and bring it out and see how much of a change there is. If all eight are out there with, that, with the auto mixer engaged, is it nice and clean? Uh, what if it's taken out for any reason, if something goes wrong, am I gonna lose my ability to keep everything under control? So it's always good to, uh, to be able to test, is this gonna work well or not? And how much am I actually gaining? Number eight, don't be afraid to pray to Dan. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, those of you who are salty corporate people are, are probably laughing right now. What I mean by this is sometimes things don't go as planned. Someone runs up on stage and your A2 forgets to call a microphone and you're just, you instead of mixing with your fingers, you're mixing with your forearm. You're just shoving up a bunch of faders and that's okay uh, because is better for you to get the cue and it might be a little bit noisy as you recover versus miss it entirely. So again, if you've checked and you known that you do have headroom in your system with the Dugan and you just see someone walking up on stage, you don't know who they are, they don't know what microphone they have, who knows what they grabbed, if they are color coded, uh, you can simply push all the microphones up, see which one is working and then put the other ones down. And that's the power of the auto mixer to help save you in those types of information so things get really crazy. Number nine, even if it is just two presenters, this still helps. It's it, it's tempting to think of this as just as a large channel count uh, situation, but I use it with all dialogue on every show, even if it's just two presenters, or even if it's only gonna be one presenter at a time, because you never know, people go off script, someone hangs out on stage and, and, and tries to introduce the other one and talks. Uh, so even if you think it's only gonna be one at a time, I'll go ahead and send all dialogue-based microphones into the Dugan if they're not singing. And lastly, in our 10 workflow tips before we jump into six alternative use cases, make sure in a PFL and put on some cans and hear your program or stream feed. So if you're sending in your microphones in the room, your video playback, and maybe some ambient microphones to capture the room, since the Dugan is gonna be lowering the noise floor coming into those open microphones, you're gonna to have to rely more on room mics to make sure it feels nice and lively, not too wet, not too dry. But if it's a very high noise floor and there's a lot of movement in between microphones from people at different spots on the stage, maybe the AC handler is on the left side, so it's really loud in these mics and not that, it may feel weird to have it coming in and out, in and out if it's juggling microphones. So I would go ahead and bring up your ambient mics or room mics to help mask some of that moving back and forth. So I get, I, I would rather have the Dugan working than not, especially if it's a tough environment, uh, but pay attention to and see if we can help minimize it by either masking it with your room mics or dial in some noise reduction processing. So if you're on a Yamaha desk, this would be the D-A-N-S-E or Dance or Dancy plugin, or use the Waves WNS insert to help remove some of that room noise that's juggling and coming into your microphones. This can either be applied on each individual microphone before it hits the Dugan, if you have that processing available, or I would bust them all down to a dialogue group and apply it there after the fact. All right, let's go through some six alternative auto mixer use cases and then we'll land this plane. Number one, if there is a normal vocal mic and an affected vocal mic on the same vocalist. So uh, I've, this has several times happened to me where someone walks in and be like, hey, this is where I'm gonna be singing 80% of the show, but on some weird bridges or a special effect on a certain song, I'm gonna leave or lean over to this other mic and do it. If you're not used to working with that artist, you may not be familiar with what they are singing or when it's gonna come. So you put on the Dugan, 
And that means where the singing into the regular microphone is going to duck the other one or, or gain share it and, and eliminate it. And when they're singing on the microphone, that's only supposed to be this cool affected thing. It's going to duck the normal mic, getting you some headroom, making things cleaner. Number two is leveraging, leveraging the Dugan and studio environment. So this particular use case as a, a commonly work with, with someone who does not like wearing IFBs or the earpieces when a producer is talking back to them or anyone over Zoom is talking back to them. So there's an overhead speaker piping it in and then we use a boom mic on them or, or a lav. So as you can probably intuit, when something's coming in over the speaker, it's pointed at their heads so they can hear, but it's coming back in the microphones. But you can take that zoom input or whatever you're using for the teleconferencing, put that in the Dugan to duck either the boom mic or the lav. And then when that person's talking, it then ducks the zoom to make sure there's no feedback loops. So being able to know that uh, I can actually use the Dugan to help not just prioritize open microphones, but use other sources that are separate to help duck and make sure I'm not getting any feedback. Number three, let's say a performer has two acoustic guitars and is switching back and forth. Sometimes I forget to unmute and mute the other one so I can have a Dugan on it to help act, uh, cover myself to make sure I'm not forgetting and leaving one open and ringing, especially if they don't have a tuner pedal that can mute it. Number four, this is probably one of my favorites and probably could have been a little bit earlier on, is that I'll have a separate Dugan trigger bus or auto mixer trigger bus that's routed into the auto mixer separate from my dialogue. So this might be video playback and I can use that. All video playbacks, my primary, my backup, uh, anything that's coming from a graphics machine. I don't have to send all those individually into the, the auto mixer uh, because number one, they're stereo sources and, do, and it's uh, they don't like working with stereo sources. Uh, and I don't want the, the video roll to be ducked when someone else is talking, but I just want it to be able to tell microphones to go away. So when I have all my video playbacks, I route them to a single Dugan trigger bus and put that in the auto mixer. So if I have a video roll and there's a lot of people on stage and I have to, you know, take a care of a lot of things, I know that those microphones get clear. And when the video comes out, uh, I have my dialogue back. Another pro tip is you can also route that same bus as the uh, sidechain input to a ducker on your ambient microphones. And so when you have your ambient mics, you want when you come out of a video roll and people are clapping, you want those. But it's, uh, just again, another thing to think about if you got six people walking on stage and there's a walk on song and then it was out of a video roll. So I want to eliminate as much as that as I can so I could focus on my cues. So by, by having that Dugan trigger input double up and be something that like, hey, I just want the video right now, nothing else. It can, uh, again, be the sidechain input to the ducker on your ambient microphones. Really spend some time dialing this in, the, the fade time, uh, and, or I guess the release time and the hold time to make sure it feels natural so it's not like eh, eh, and having them come back. Uh, so I usually like a longer hold time, maybe a second, and then maybe a two-second release time if you can get up that high. Number five, this is in a music director context or uh, maybe even a, a church environment that has a, a music director. Sometimes they're having both a live human who's playing an instrument, who's serving as music director, but then there's also cues that are happening, maybe from Ableton that's going chorus, two, three, four. You can have it to where the MD microphone would duck the cues if they need to override it and say something else. Kind of a cool use case. And lastly, in a touring environment, when you have a monitor engineer, you're, they're usually mixing in crowd microphones for the performer's ears so they don't feel like they're too isolated. But if they need to talk to them, they don't want to get swallowed up. So you can have the actual talkback microphone and the crowd mics be in the auto mixer. So if the monitor engineer or maybe even the music director needs to talk to everybody, those get ducked so they're not swallowed up in the noise. All right, that was a lot of fun. I want to land the plane here. Bottom line, an auto mixer is an invaluable tool to help clean up your mixes, uh, make it less stressful when managing a lot of microphones, and ultimately uh, give yourself a chance to be able to slow down a little bit and trust that you have a little bit of help when you're having to work through a lot of cues and a lot of microphones. Um, we, we unpacked how it works, why it works, what to use it for, some common corporate use cases, as well as some alternative use cases outside of that environment. It. And I would love to hear from you in the comments below. How are you using it in a way that I've not covered before? Are there some auto mixer parameters or even plugins or different consoles that are implementing it a different way that might be cool? This uh, again was a blast. My name is Michael Curtis. I love helping you get amazing results on your show in every single seat. Uh, would love to hear from you. I'll catch you next time.